I'm making this video because I wanted to answer a question that I get a lot. And that question is, how do I, how do I know what's going on with the weather so well? Now, I'm no professional meteorologist. I've been studying, I've had a passion for weather and I've been studying it for many years now. But I'm not, I don't have my college degree that says I'm, me, you know, I'm an official professional meteorologist. I'm on my way to get there though. But any, any professional meteorologist, when they're making a weather forecast, will look at something called a computer model. Um, and there's many computer models that are available out there. Now for time's sake, I'm going to look at just one of them. This particular model is called the GFS, the Global Forecast Solution, I think. I think that's what it's called? Oh no, Global Forecast System, sorry. I think, if I'm not mistaken on that. Um, and like I said, just for time's sake, we're just going to look at one. If you want to have the, the more the more models you look at, and the you know the more the more accurate your forecast m will probably end up being, typically. So you can't just look at one model and put all your hopes and dreams into it, and then something else completely happens and your forecast is completely wrong. So that's why you want to make sure you want to look at as many models as you possibly can when making an accurate forecast. But like I said, for time's sake, we're just gonna look at this one. So, this is a good time to make a video like this because we have a potential storm coming through next week. And it's been showing up for days uh, on this particular model and a few others uh, since about uh, 21st of January. So, about, well, maybe not quite a week yet. We're almost there. About six days, the same storm signal has been showing up. So here's our storm. We're at hour 150, 150 hours from now. 12 Zulu, February 2nd. So that's 7 a.m. on Tuesday. Here's our storm right here. Uh, it's kind of out here in northern Texas. The center of it's in northern Texas at this time. Here's our area. We are kind of chilly a little bit. Uh, we're kind of low to mid 30s at, on 7 a.m. Tuesday. Uh, so here's our storm, like I said. Now what we're going to do is we're going to advance six hours. As you can see, the storm has broadened a little bit, uh, moved into the, the center of it's now moving into Oklahoma. This is by 1 p.m. on Tuesday. Now let's take a look at precip. This particular storm that I've been watching has a lot more precipitation available compared to what a typical January storm would be producing. Now why? The, Go the Gulf of Mexico is wide open. There's a lot of moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see, this is 24 hour accumulated precipitation. So over a 24 hour period ending 1 p.m. Tuesday, as you can see there's like areas well over one inch of liquid precip equivalent here in like northern Kansas, southern Nebraska, and the Colorado. No precipitation in our area Tuesday afternoon. So According to this model, Tuesday afternoon is going to remain dry. According to this model. It may end up being rainy. We, we just don't know yet. We don't know details because it's so far out. Alright, now let's go forward another hour. Now the precipitation is starting to get into our area. As you can see, really heavy precipitation to our south and lighter amounts in our area. This is by 7 p.m. Tuesday. Uh, let's take a look at where our storm is by now uh, and temperatures, surface temperatures. So as you can see, uh, storm is pretty strong. Look at these gradient lines. They're really tight over our area. Now whenever these gradient lines get tight like this, usually it means the winds get nice and strong. And because, because the storm's coming up from this direction, we're going to have southerly winds. And southerly winds draw warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico, especially when they're strong like this. There's going to be a lot of moisture coming up. Uh, and the temperatures have probably, yeah, the temperatures have increased. Still probably not as warm as what they could be. We're still like in the mid to upper 30s. Uh, but the temperatures are definitely rising with this storm. Uh, so let's advance another hour. The center of the low pressure is now moving into Illinois by 1 a.m. Wednesday. The temperatures are actually rising 
they're not they're not dropping they're they're rising through the night because we have this strong southerly wind in in place and at this time this is probably when the heaviest precipitation is going to fall according to this model as you can see a lot heavier precip over our area anywhere from three quarters to one inch of accumulated precipitation over that 24 hour period and it just and it accumulates even more as we uh, continue to move into Wednesday morning. Now, the center of the low pressure is going to go almost, if not right over our area, as you can see right here. Now, the winds are supposed to get nice and calm. You know, it's kind of like being in the eye of a hurricane. You know, things get nice and calm S somewhat. I mean, it's not going to be entirely calm, not that calm, but the winds are going to be a lot lighter whenever the center of low pressure is over our area or at least near our area. This is according to what what this model is saying where the track is going to be. Now, temperature wise, this is at our warmest point. This is where the most amount of warm air will be over the area. As you can see, the temperatures are all the way into the 40s, like well into the 40s by 7 a.m. on Wednesday. Now, Oops, I clicked on the wrong frame. There we go. Okay. Now, there's a cold front that's like right in here. As you can see, there's a lot more, a lot colder air coming in behind the storm. What does that mean? If there's any precipitation left over, it's going to be changing to snow. And there is a parameter on here that shows snow depth. And I typically look at that it'll give me an idea of how much snow will be on the ground at that time so you can kind of estimate how much snow you might get is any snow coming out of this you betcha as you can see really really heavy snow amounts are possible not going to say yeah it's gonna happen heavy snow amounts are predicted in this region anywhere where you see red is at least a foot of snow <laughs> And the, the yellow, the yellow line, that's six inches. Here's where we are. We are outside of both of those zones. So it looks like if there's going to be heavy snow at this storm, it's going to be to our northwest. However, it doesn't mean we don't get any snow at all. We're kind of right on that cutoff line where we could get a, a few inches of snow on the backside of the storm. So it's something, we, it's something to look out for, of course. So now we've kind of looked at a bunch of different parameters. Uh, let's see, what else can we look at of this? So, let's go back to, we're going to go back a few hours. We're going to look at some of the different parts of the storm. Where stuff might be happening. Okay. So, this is the 7 a.m. image Wednesday. Center low pressure is over our area. You know what, let's go back even farther. Actually, yeah, okay. No, 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 no. Yes, okay. So we'll, we'll just use this image as an example. So, with a, with a storm that has a, a strong warm front, which is right up in here, a strong warm front and a lot of moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, there's going to be two sides of the storm when it happens in January. There's going to be a really cold side, really cold and snowy, which is up here, and a really warm side where there might be thunderstorms and even severe weather. So, this is what we got to look out for. This is why the track of the storm is very important. And when we got a storm that is a, you know, that's several days to weeks away, you can't be sure of what's going to happen. You can't draw an accurate forecast this far away, even with this storm. Now, one thing that is confident about this storm is that it looks like it's going to happen because it's been showing up consistently, not just on the GFS, but many other models as well for many days now. This, the same storm keeps popping up with a similar, with, well, the intensity has been varying a little bit. Earlier runs of the GFS were actually had the storm a lot stronger. This one's a little bit weaker and slowed down. But it's those details that you kind of have to keep watching for. As you get closer to the event, models kind of lock in and they get a lot more confident. This, uh, this particular model has been bouncing around in the track. Uh... I mean, this one pretty much puts the center of it right over us, 
but that center could go to our north or to our south at the same time. So it's something to look out for. So what I'm saying about the track, uh, the track means a lot, is that if the storm were to go farther south, say the center of low pressure is actually going to be down here and it goes this way. This, this means we're going to be farther away from this warm sector, which is down here, and we're going to be more into here, which means that we will be more favorable for having a big snowstorm. If this low were to go any farther north, like say, say the low, the center of the low actually ends up being over here and goes this way, we're going to actually be much deeper in this warm sector, and what will happen is we'll have no snow at all, but we could have thunderstorms and severe weather. So this is what I mean whenever, this is why forecasts aren't very accurate until you get within three days, sometimes even less than that. That's why you can be looking at your your long range forecast and one day can say, oh, snow and like two degrees and then the next day says sunny and 40 for the same day. That's because of these models, they shift all over the place. So with this particular storm, I'm pretty excited for it because we haven't had anything huge to track for a while. But can't get too excited with the storm yet. Uh, for you snow lovers out there, don't bank on this thing producing a lot of snow. It will be producing a lot of snow, but we don't know where. We, we, it just depends on that track. If you want a lot of snow, you better hope the storm goes to the south, because then we'll be under the gun for a lot of snow. So that's one thing I do is, you know, I go through the forecast models and kind of look at what they're saying. And then what I do is I go to the National Weather Service and look at their forecasts because they're, they're the professionals. Uh, let me zoom out here. See, we got a chance of rain on Sunday. That's actually with a uh, weaker system that will be passing through ahead of the big one. Now, their forecast only goes out to seven days. This, for, this storm's a little bit beyond that, so we don't have a good forecast. But... At the onset of precipitation from the storm, which is Tuesday, as you can see, they say a chance of shower is a high near 41. So, they're kind of, their solutions anywhere from being really cold and snowy to being warm and potential severe weather. Looks like they're leaning more on the warm side right now. As of right now, this could change. They're leaning more towards uh, a rain, mostly a rain event with maybe some snow mixing in. So you kind of look at that, you know, what are they agreeing with, and you kind of, if you want to make your own prediction, you go somewhere in between that. And I did mention that there is severe weather possible with this storm, based on how much moisture is available, and look at this. Seven days in advance, the Storm Prediction Center has an area drawn out where severe weather might happen from the storm. Day seven, that is, what's day seven? Day seven is on Tuesday. So Tuesday, it looks like this is where severe weather could happen based on the current storm track. As you can see, that's well south of our area. Now, like I said, if the storm is to shift to the north, this little, this area that they've highlighted will also shift with that track. So it's something to watch out for. Well, I've been rambling for almost 15 minutes now. I didn't think I'd go that long, but those are just some of the things that I do and what any professional meteorologist would do whenever they're drawing out a forecast. So, um, like I said, big storm possible next week. It could produce anything from thunderstorms and heavy rain to potentially heavy snow and maybe even a blizzard. That's, that's just the, that's just the gist of it. Um, so, or it could produce nothing. You never know. So, that's about all I have for you. Uh, so, thank you for watching this.